Accepting is not enough. That's only the first step. When I talk about someone who has a difference, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Perhaps someone with a disability, or that's just someone that's different in comparison to you. Now look at this image. Do you see something different between us? Yes, the color of our skin, our eyes, our hair, and perhaps a difference in our age and our size. But now, what if I tell you that there's a difference much deeper between these ones? She's my sister, Julieta, and she has a syndrome called Fellow McDermott. Now, would you say there's a big difference between us? Between us? Yes, you may say there is. And actually, that's what I would say too. Living 12 years of my life next to my sister has been one of the biggest blessings of my entire life. Having the opportunity to watch her grow, becoming such a lovely and warm-hearted girl, gives me the chance to say that I have a superpower. This power probably isn't the sort of superpower that you're thinking of. I don't have the ability to fly or to turn invisible, but I do have the superpower of experiencing, knowing and understanding the communication and perception of a neurodiverse person. Every year, I see how society gets better in accepting and respecting others. But accepting people like my sister is not the only thing they need. There are many events that have occurred in the life of Julieta that demonstrate how it is much more valuable to include than just to accept. What I want to show is that there is a fine line between accepting and including, and the impact that both of these have is completely different. Once you decide to make a simple action of inclusion, you will boost the happiness and confidence in people like my sister. And also, you will become part of the change. You will be the kind of person that decides to include rather than just to accept and live with the difference. And that's cool, isn't it? But now, you may ask yourself, how do we include people like Julieta? What does inclusion even mean? Well, today, I will share with you five different pillars that you can embrace in your daily life. What these pillars will do is that they will create a huge change in the life of the neurodiverse community, since it will open new chances for them to be included in, and also it would open new chances for them to contribute in our community. Pillar number one, fitting in. Having a disability often creates difficulties in self-expression problems in understanding feelings and regulating emotions. Did you know that too much external stimuli like light, sound or movement can cause anxiety or even panic attacks in people like my sister? For example, anxiety for Julieta comes with her freezing out and not wanting to move. Her breathing starts coming fast and her chest starts hurting as if she was experiencing a heart attack and then she cries nonstop. Imagine just for a second that this is your life and that you have to experience this almost every day. What a hard job, right? Now, here I'll give answer to a very much asked question. When and how do I reach out to her? Well, there are many things you can try to understand before you do this. First of all, be aware of her emotional state. If you notice that she's happy and talking with others, it would be a great time for you to talk to her. Instead, if you notice inappropriate behavior, meaning screaming, crying, or hitting, of course, it won't be the best time. The second thing you need to try to understand before reaching out is the context. Are there many external stimuli? If the answer to this question is yes, it won't be a great time. Instead, if you notice that she's happy and in a safe place, it would be a great moment for you and go talk to her. Pillar number two, ways to engage with them. Routines are very important for Julieta. Through routines, she's able to keep situations under control and that gives her a sense of stability and wellness. Through routines, she's able to keep situations through routines Routines are one of the main things that help her stay stable throughout the day. And it's very difficult for her to react in a positive way when plans change. 
We can also ask simple questions. So if routines are important, as I just previously mentioned, how about using them as our place to go when we want to reach out? We can also ask simple questions like, what's your name? What's the thing you most enjoy doing? Or what have you done today? If this doesn't work and you don't find any other topic of conversation, then rely on the person that's accompanying Julieta. 95% of the time, Julieta will be with someone. It could be me, my mom, my dad, or even her personal assistant. So, if you don't have a clue on what to ask her, rely on us. And for sure, we will give you hints. Pillar number three, be comfortable with the unexpected. How can we expect regular behavior when now we know changes are so difficult for them to handle? Little things can trigger anxiety, like route changes when driving to a known place, or even changing the menu for breakfast can be a big thing. It is very difficult for Julieta to react in a positive way when plans change. The neurodiverse population can experience regular breakdowns, like crying, yelling, hitting, speeding, or even saying mean words. So if this happens to you, don't take it personally. Pillar number four, provide mindful support. I have learned to be more patient, resilient, and also get to know the wonder within my sister. And all of this has been because of the mindful support I have provided to her every time I find the opportunity to do so. I understand it can be difficult for you to be with someone different, but the unknown is always hard. And it is not common for us, the neurotypical population, to want to step out of our comfort zone. But you know what? I really recommend to you that you give it a try. Every human being has the need to socially interact and to feel they belong. And thus, as the neurotypical population, we should try to meet them and also get to know the world of wonder within each one of them. Like us, they have hobbies. They have likes and dislikes. And they would give the world to have a friend, or even one day, a significant other. Pillar number five, don't feel ashamed. Break patterns, be different, and make the decision to stand out from the rest. Do not ignore those that are in need. Do not feel shame if you're helping someone, or perhaps if you become friends with someone that's sitting on a wheelchair, or can see, speak, or perhaps has a syndrome. I understand it can be difficult to be with someone different, but who said life was easy? In the end, the satisfaction you will feel after spending time with them will give you the opportunity to know an awesome world beyond your own imagination. This population needs our love, support, and interest to make them to feel that they, that they belong. So let's all learn to accept differences. Today, the 22nd of October, is the Fellow McDermott Syndrome International Awareness Day. A great and perfect day to share with the world that having a neurodivergent sister has been a real challenge for me and for all of us that surround and support Julieta. But being able to be there for her has given us the opportunity to know and perceive life in a different way. And also, it has given us the opportunity to put ourselves in her shoes and see the world through her eyes. I truly believe that embracing my sister's disabilities has given us the power to strengthen every one of our abilities to become better human beings. That's why I invite you all to embrace these five pillars in your daily life and become part of the change. Thank you very much.